Um, one second. There we go. Um, so we've seen uh, a few achievements here from um, from CY. Uh, the Drodigan Cup. Uh, he was the September and January champions. Um, he's competed previously in the World Cup of VGC. Uh, he's had some long in-person showings, such as like a 6-3 finish at OCIC, which is obviously nothing to sneeze at. Going positive at those events is hard enough. 6-3 uh, record. Very, very strong. Uh, let's have a look at this team. Anything on this team that stands out to you, any chance, Yuki? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think Roy Moon is something that has uh, picked up a lot recently. Uh, I know uh, Marco Fierro from Italy uh, top aided uh, the little uh, regionals last week with it. And uh, another interesting choice on the Iron Hands is the Volt Switch over the commonly used Head Slam uh, to check Fluttermane, uh, especially with this team having Rory Moon being a little bit more uh, vulnerable to Fluttermane than other teams. Um, I think that choice is very intentional, and uh, I'm excited to see if that makes any difference uh, on this game. Yeah, I think with uh, the Landers wanting to cycle Intimidates, Amoongus wants to switch in and out a lot of the time for Regenerator. Um, Fluttermane will often want to switch um, just to change moves on that choice spec set. I think having Volt Switch here makes a lot of sense. Especially since you already have flash fire, uh, sorry, flash fire, flash cannon, Heatran, um, to deal that super effective steel type damage to flutter mains. Absolutely. So yeah, I think it's a pretty uh, standard party that likes to switch in and out, like you said, uh, and do heavy blows with like the flutter main Landorus and Roaring Moon. So yeah, it's excited to see uh, what uh, his opponent might be using, uh, or uh, T Sock over from uh, Korea. Yeah. So. Uh, Tesiok, um we see here with a very, very similar team, four of the same six here. Um, but first of all, let's have a look at some of his achievements. So he was World's Day 2 uh, this season, so a very recent and very strong result, uh, as well as a couple of very strong Korean Nationals performances, top four in 2019, uh, top 16 in 2016, uh, and in 2018, a finalist in the Korean League. Um, so... Again, a very, very strong player, a lot of accolades to their name. So this promises to be a very, very good match to watch. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's always cool to see players who have uh, really strong results from uh, a long time ago. Back in, you know, uh, you can see even 2016, that's Generation 6, I believe, uh, all the way to Generation 9 this year. And I think it's really cool. And moving on to the uh, T-Sox team, we see Landris, Heatran, Fermain, Iron Hands, Ogrekon, Cresselia. Uh, I think the, probably the most noble Pokemon here for me is a Cresselia, who uh, not only has a stored power set, which I think is quite unique, but also has a Terra Blast that is the Fighting Terra. So uh, one deals super effective damage to Pokemon that can resist the stored power. So I'm really excited to see how um, it will impact uh, this match. But yeah, anything from your end, what catches your eye? I mean, it's hard not to look at that Cresselia. Cresselia is normally <laughs> used as like a, a bulky, bulky support, um, usually running Trick Room. Obviously, you see Lunar Blessing on most sets. But this one, the Calm Mind Stored Power Terra Blast, a very, very unique set. Uh, but I think one that doesn't have a lot of immediate damage. So this team, if the Cresselia comes, it's going to have to be built around supporting it with Fake Out from Iron Hands, Follow Me from the Ogre Pond um, to try and allow it a bit of opportunity to set up with that Calm Mind, because you need two Calm Minds before Stored Power is doing more damage than a Psychic would. Um, and yeah, the other thing I want right. to highlight here is the difference in Flutter Mains. So, we saw on CUI's team, we had a Choice Specs Flutter Main. This one, though, is running that Booster Energy item. Hard to say which one it's going to be, because um, we don't see an Icy Wind. That's normally the giveaway for a Speed Booster. Um, but we do see mm. Taunt on this, which is very interesting. Again, maybe another way just to enable Cresselia to set up. Uh, maybe getting around opposing taunt users or opposing trickrum for example but yeah otherwise the yeah. relatively similar we've got life orb on heatran over uh i believe it was the sugar bay on shuai's team but other than that looks like a very even game so i'm excited to see how this plays out yeah you can really tell that the team is uh centered a lot around the cresselia uh giving it support like you said the iron hands the landers also the ogre pond having followed me uh, even directing uh, moves like uh, Amoongus' uh, uh, Spore, which is previously pretty hard to do with a Grass-type Pokémon. Uh, so, I think that's very cool, and we'll jump right into the lead. So we have the Fluttermane Amoongus um, on, I believe we're looking at this from CY's side, uh, against the Ogapon and Fluttermane from Tasiok. Yeah, so uh, interesting to see the the two Flutter mains go head to head, like you mentioned. Uh, I think uh, one having the Choice Specs variant uh, is pretty advantageous, 
uh, over for um, pay, uh, sorry for uh, Sue Wise End, and I think we missed the uh, the the yeah, boost on the booster energy. Boost. Yeah, so that was going to be an important part of the matchup. Um, obviously, speed advantage on Fluttermain is a big thing, but at the same time, without that special attack booster, you're really threatening to one shot most Fluttermains. So. Very much changes the dynamic of how this turn plays out, and unfortunately, we don't know what that dynamic is at the moment. <laughs> and we obviously we see the Terra. Uh, yeah, we see the terrestrialization coming out from, I believe that was Taste side. Um, we're going to see that Terra Fairy on the Flutter main. Threatening to get big damage down here with uh, a Dazzling Gleam, maybe. Oh, sorry, apologies, that was on uh, CY's side. Uh, we see the Terra Fairy on the Specs Flutter main, threatening that big damage. We see a Protect from Amoongus, a Protect from the opposing Fluttermane as well. And we're going to see... I presume that was going to be a Moonblast or a Shadow Ball. Uh, no, it's a Dazzling Gleam, uh, which hits the Protect from Fluttermane. is going to go into that Ogre Pond, dealing just over half the damage, so it can't take another one of those. Ivy Cudgel comes out, hits the Fluttermane, puts it at 22 HP, but just about surviving here. And now the speed on the opposing Fluttermane is going to become a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, both sides made some plays that made a lot of sense to me. Uh, over from uh, Taysox end, uh, wanted to uh, get some damage down on the Flutter main um, to open up uh, his Flutter main a little bit more. Whereas on uh, Shuwai's end, uh, wanted to lack into the Dazzling Gleam, uh, a spread move, uh, fearing the follow me coming out from the Ogre Pond. Uh, and now I feel like the, uh, the, the Amoongus is probably a lot better positioned now if the uh, Flutter main on Shuwai's end is faster. So they can knock out the opposing uh, Ogre Pond before it can, uh, you know, get more follow me going and then score the Flutter. So, uh, yeah, like you said, the speed interaction could be very important. And we're not going to see that speed interaction. Um, that makes me think that probably speed booster on the opposing main, switching out before it can hit it back, bringing in that heat trend with the quad resistance to Fairy. See the spiky shield coming out from Ogre Pond, maybe scared of a Dazzling Beam itself, or even a Pollen Puff from Amoongus. And we see that taunt come out from the main, which we highlighted. Earlier, that's going to shut down the Amoongus from going for anything like a Taunt or a Rage Powder in previous uh, in the following turns. But it looks like it did just go for the Pollen Puff into that Spiky Shield. Yeah, so really correctly reading the Taunt, uh, which is it, but uh, yeah, the Taunt really shuts down uh, the Amoongus uh, to making that read. And now the Heatran is definitely exposed to uh, any kind of IV Cubital that could come out from the Ogre Pond on T-Spot's end. So, uh, definitely going to have to react in some way, uh, whether it's a terrestrial illusion uh, or having to switch out. So uh, I think T Fox definitely has the pressure here, and now I'm ex excited to see uh, how he takes advantage of it. Well, CUI's already used his terrestrialization, getting that extra damage down on the Flutter. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Team on turn one. So there are no more defensive options for this Heatran outside of just protecting. Uh, but we do see the Ogre Pond switch out, interestingly. Uh, Maybe fearing a protect from Heatran and then a Pollen Puff. Um, and we're going to see the Landorus come in now. That Intimidate not doing much into either of these two special attackers, but Landorus, without the threat of Rage Powder, uh, is threatening big stomping potential to the Heatran, who does go for the protect here. We're going to see the Fluttermane go Shadow Ball into Amoongus, just get some chip damage down. And Amoongus is forced to go for a Pollen Puff, and it's going to hit into that Landorus. Quad resisted, not very much damage there, and now the protect is likely off the field on that Heatran. Yeah, I think it's really, really good uh, positioning over from T-Sox and uh, really understand the positioning of his Pokemon and uh, knowing what is exerting what kind of pressure at the time. So now he's in an excellent position where the Amoongus cannot protect, cannot spool, uh, and the Heatran have just protected. So unless uh, Suai wants to go for some more risks and uh, yeah, basically go for a double protect, uh, that slot is going to take a ton of damage from this Landorus and Flutter main. So, yeah, let's see what, what kind of damage uh, Tisa can dish out this turn. Yeah, well, I think it's it's also a case of maybe if the opponent reads too hard a switch, because there is a Landorus in the back for, um, for CUI, potentially. Uh, we are going to see the switch here from Amoongus, get a bit of healing back from that Regenerator, and we are going to bring in... It is that Landorus getting the Intimidate down on the opposing Landorus, and with Sugarberry on Heatran, I reckon that means it probably survives this tip. Uh, we obviously see a Terrestrialization come out from Tasiok now. Uh, and it's going to be the Landorus going for that Terra Flying. So this is a good read from uh, CUI uh, saying, OK, I think the Landorus switching on my Heatran is incredibly obvious. So I'm actually just going to keep my Heatran in, go for an attack, and I'm going to tank this Terra Flying Terra Blast that's going into the former Amoongus slot. 
And Landris takes that very well, a little under half. We see the double up into that slot as well. Landris just about surviving with 17 HP, and we see the Heat Wave come out, double connecting, big damage down on both Pokemon. Yeah, this is a big turn of events. Uh, like you said, the pressure from the Landris that hadn't even showed itself in this match, uh, really paying off dividends as the Heat Trend came out uh, completely unscathed this turn. And now, depending on how these Landrises are trained, uh, if so wise uh, Landris is faster, it could go for a Rock Slide, uh, probably get the knockout on the Landris on Taysok's end, and if there's a flinch on Flutterman, uh, that could end up being game over. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a huge turn of events, and now it's Taysok who has to react for the first time. Yeah, worth noting it's Rock Tomb rather than Rock Slide on Siwei's Landorus, actually. So you cannot go for that flinch on Fluttermane. Uh, uh, not that it would have mattered, we see the Iron Hands coming in on the opposing Landorus slot. Worried maybe about that Rock move. And um, we are going to see another switch from the other Landorus as well into Amoongus. As Fluttermane goes for a Protect. Scared of maybe another hit from the Heatran. Uh, and yes, we see the Heat Wave come out. Yep. Sorry, from the Heatran. And connect only oh. with the Iron Hands. And no burn. So all burns dodged so far from Tasty Ock. He'll be uh, thankful for that one. But it becomes a bit of a weird position now, I think, for Amoongus. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, the obvious move, quote-unquote, uh, is the fake out into the Heatran and the taunt into the Amoongus, uh, which will basically nullify um, any attempt for Suwai to get damage out this turn. Uh, the problem is that to make any kind of defensive pivots, uh, you risk uh, knocking out a Pokemon since uh, both of Suwai's Pokemon in the back are such low health. So, uh, yeah, I think this will become another turn where there is no right answer, and it'll just be up to the players to uh, decide what they think uh, their opponent will do. Like you said, it's you might want to switch to get around the taunt, which we do see from CY. Now, if Tasiok goes aggressive into the slot, as you mentioned, there's a Pokemon going down here. And we see that Fluttermane coming in, and no fake out. Oh, sorry, we do see a fake out rather into um, Heatran, and we do see the taunt. So, a good turn from CY getting that Fluttermane back in. But again, we don't know the speeds on these Fluttermanes just yet. So, this potentially isn't the best position. Uh, maybe Siwei was actually going for a, a sacrifice there to get a free switch back into his own Andorus. Um, but instead, we've got Fluttermane on the field next to this Heatran. Yep, and this it couldn't be more relevant, the speed interaction between these two Fluttermanes, because uh, Siwei's Fluttermane is in position to just blast through both of uh, uh, T-Stop Pokemon, given uh, how low uh, his Flutter is, and also Iron Hands to take super effective damage. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if uh, t Sox is faster, then he could go for a Dazzling Gleam and a Drain Punch into the Heatran, which would also end up in a double knockout. So uh, this is a really, really uh, tight situation when both players seem to be uh, walking on thin ice. Yeah, we see the Fluttermane switch again. Uh, that slot is going in and out on CUI's side, and we're going to see the Amoongus come back in. Scared of the Dazzling Gleam, but we just see a Protect from Fluttermane, who identifies the Flash Cannon on Heatran. I don't want to deal with that. Very obvious you're going to make a defensive switch here, so I'm not going to let you get a free KO. And we do see the Flash Game going to protect. We see a Drain Punch, interestingly, go into the Amoongus. Um, so not very much damage there. A little bit of health back on the Iron Hands. No Rocky Helmet on this Amoongus, so no real punishment for that. But not really much happening that turn. Yeah, pretty interesting to see a Drain Punch going to a Flutter main, which historically, or typically... Uh, gets to nullify that attack, but thanks to the terrestrialization, uh, also wanted to cover for a potential lander switch in, but uh, covers for both with the Amoongus switching in, uh, and the Chant, again, just uh, really brave to attack in front of a uh, threat like Stomping Tanks from earlier and Drain Punch this time. So, uh, a lot of uh, you know, offensive, um, aggressive playing from uh, Sue Wise end. Yeah, it's been quite an aggressive game from uh, Sue I think, Taste up. Uh, trying to play this a bit slower, a bit more safe. Um, but again, we just see that taunt come out from the Flutterman. The Amoongus is not in a great position here. Um, admittedly, Iron Hands can't do a huge amount of damage here. We obviously see the Flash Cannon now come out from the Heatran. That is going to take out the Flutterman. It's a big threat down from, uh, uh, on, from uh, CY's perspective. That Flutterman was giving a lot of trouble to him uh, with the taunt on the Amoongus. So now this hopefully enables Amoongus for the rest of the game. And we see that Rage Powder redirect the Drain Punch into the Amoongus, taking very minimal damage in exchange for a knockout on the Flutter Lane. Yep, and uh, we see the, I believe, the first knockout of this game, um, which is quite interesting because we've seen a lot of uh, very high power Pokemon coming out from both ends. 
And yeah, it's just so interesting to me to see how both players seem to kind of evade the evade the um, the power race and just kind of uh, go for more uh, safer turns where uh, Flare Main's protecting in front of each other, uh, switching out in favor, and uh, the Flash can actually picking out the knockout there. So uh, now, the, yeah, the offensive power on uh, T-Sox and definitely goes down a lot. And um, on the other hand, the the top being a pretty good uh, parting gift from the Flutter main, and now the uh, Amoogus is uh, could be at the mercy of the uh, Heatran back for T-Sock. Uh, we've already seen the Landers in the back though for t so Sorry, no the Landers, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but we have seen the Terror, so as you said, that Amoogus is under a lot of threat from that. Uh, we're going to see a Flutter main come back in here. Uh, we see a spiky shield from the Ogre Pond. Worried again about that Pollen Puff from Amoogus as we see a tech from Heatran, who is also worried about an Ivy Cudgel from the Ogre Pond. A lot of Pokemon being scared of each other this game, and we're going to see the Heavy Slam come out from Tasiok, and that's going to pick up the Fluttermane. But that is going to give CY a free switch here to reposition, potentially bring the Amoogus back in for that Rage Powder threat on the Iron Hands, or more likely we're going to see the Landorus to try and get around that Ogre Pond. And it is the Landorus... Yeah, just say... Oh, sorry. sorry. Yes, like... You... Yeah, the, um, I was going to say this is a pretty bright uh, move to go for the uh, Heavy Slam into the Amoongus, which could have, you know, still stayed in to do super effective damage to the Ogre Pond, but uh, reading the switch to the Heavy Slam and uh, getting the KO on the Fluttermin uh, looks pretty good, but like you uh, the free switch in into the Landris is looking pretty good right now, uh, throwing a U-turn onto the Ogre Pond that had just uh, Spiky Shielded already, uh, and the Heatran also raided to dish out a lot of damage. Yeah, the spike shield on the Ogre Pond last turn is a very good call out from CY, because um, now, like you said, there's no threat of spiky shield this turn. If spike shield were still in play, this U turn becomes a lot more dangerous, because if you hit that into a spike shield, you're going to knock out your own Landorus. Yeah. Instead, we see the Ogre Pond switching out here. In comes the Landorus on Tosiok's side again, getting that Intimidate down. So it's going to weaken whatever move Landorus goes for here, which is going to be that U turn into the Landorus slot. And Amoongus is going to come back in here. We're going to cycle that Intimidate one more time. And now Heatran gets a free attack here. And if this is a Heat Wave that connects on Landorus, this is going to be a pretty rough situation for Tasiok as he loses all of his ability to switch now. Uh, Amoongus comes back in. Does the Drapage go to the Heatran? So I'm curious to see. Heat Wave double connects. Landorus does go down here. And now this Amoongus is a real threat because it's it's got that Pollen Puff into Ogre Pond and it can redirect any attacks from the Iron Hands. Amoongus might just win this game by itself at this point. We do see the Drain Punch come out. Not very much damage after a couple of Intimidates on that Iron Hands. He hasn't switched in a little while. But Heatran taking a bit over half. That damage doesn't seem too relevant though with the threat of IP Cudgel still on the field, which we see from this Ogre Pond as it switches back in. Yes, an Ogre Pond immune to the uh, Rage Powder coming out from the Amoongus, so definitely good positioning. Uh, and, and yeah, I guess Heatran is typically trained to be slower than the Ogre Pond, so uh, this looks like a pretty nice attack into the Heatran, but of course you can also protect and you can have the uh, Pollen Puff go into uh, the Ogre Pond, so uh, still a lot of reach to happen, but uh, I think, yeah, it was pretty big for T-Sock to get that Drain Punch into the Heatran to get it into range. Uh, first time actually capitalizing on getting big damage to Heatran. And we see a Protect from Heatran, and this time we don't see a Protect from Tasiok. Um Both players have been playing very scared of each other for the entire game. Uh, this time Tasiok going on the offensive, and it comes back to bite him as the Ivy Cudgel hits into that Protect. Heavy Slam into Amoongus again with the Intimidate not very much damage at all. Pollen Puff comes out and doesn't quite oh. kill the Ogre Pond. It will stick around for one more turn to terrorize this Heatran. Yeah, absolutely big survival from the Ogre Pond, the way it's trained uh, in its book. Uh, and again, if we assume that the Ogre Pond is faster than the Heatran, that's a pretty good IV cudgel uh, into the Heatran that we see right now, uh, getting the knockout. And uh, luckily, the Moongus can choose between getting a knock the Ogre Pond uh, and a Spore onto the Iron Hands. But uh, yeah, being down to the last two Pokemon, not a position you want to be in. Yeah, we see the Hair Slam come out again. Not too much damage on the Moongus. Uh, and we're, it's going to get even less with the Landorus coming in here for another Intimidate. And Iron Hands is going to go to sleep. Uh, so now the question is, I think, where do you aim this Landorus? Because I think you want to get damage down on this Iron Hands as much as possible. Because the Moongus can just pick off the last couple of HP on this, uh, uh, on the Ogre Pond. Can't really do very much damage to the Iron Hands. But at the same time, you could try and save your Landorus here, go with the Stompy Tantrum into the Ogre Pond. But if they Spiky Shield, then you get nothing for your troubles. Um, so it's it's still a little bit of a cool here. Um, 
Not the easiest situation to try and manoeuvre, but we will see how these players deal with it. And we do see this bike shield come out from the Ogre Pond. And we are going to see... I don't see what we're looking there. I think... Did he look in Terror Blast? I believe he might have to uh, evade the damage from Spiky Shield. And the Pollen Pass. yeah, we see them out. So Landorus back up to a very healthy state here, um, saying, okay, I don't need to Stomping Tantrum through your Iron Hands. Uh, as long as Ogre Pond can't hit me, there's just nothing you can reach. And could be a really big, uh, really good bring for Taysok here. Obviously, you've got to worry about giving Flash Fly boosts to the opposing Heatran. Uh, but that does kind of go both ways. But it allows you a little bit more offensive pressure onto the Moombus, which was a real problem last time. But instead, we see the Cresselia as the mix-up here from Taysok. Maybe saying, okay, I'm just going to click, follow me, you can't spore me, and I'm going to start setting up these Calm Minds. Yep, and I'm so excited to see this uh, adjustment. And it's in a really great spot. Uh, so unlike the Flutter Man on Taysok's end, uh, Shu Eyes does not have Taunt. So cannot, uh, you know, stop these follow me's from... Uh, redirecting these uh, spores uh, away from the Cresselia and giving probably at least two turns for the Cresselia to set up and that might be enough to uh, you know really propel it to start taking a lot of knockouts. Yeah I mean it's worth noting as well that the Ogre Pond can't take that many hits from this Choice Specs Flutter main so uh, we don't see the follow me come out here so a brave move by Tacey uh saying look this follow me is so obvious i don't think you're gonna go for a spore i'm instead just gonna hit your flutter main with my big big weapon and we see the carmine coming up from cresselia here starting to get those boosts up what does the amoongus go for here is the big question though and we do see the pollen puff come out into cresselia again hedging against that follow me but Tacey now rewarded for a very aggressive turn one play with a lot of damage on that flutter main and yes, the Cresselia took a lot of damage there, but it got its mind up, it's got its leftovers boost, and we've still got a full health follow me Ogre Pond on the field. Yeah, and I think the the the, the move choice on Cresselia is uh, maybe detrimenting Taysok here a little bit, since it has the Terror Blast. If it terrestrializes, it becomes a fighting type. So if you hard read that, uh, you know, the Amoongus would not go for a Spore, didn't have the option to go for uh, knock on the Flutter Man, and now it's taking a lot more damage because of it. And again, going aggressive, not clicking follow me here. We see the Fluttermane go down to that Horn Leech from Ogre Pond. And a Lunar Blessing from Cristella. That's going to put it comfortably out of range of a Pollen Puff from Moongus. We'll see if Moongus goes for the score here. It doesn't. Another Pollen Puff comes out. And again, that Cristella just about surviving. But Cristella is very slow. It's very low on health. It really risks going down to another attack here. Yeah, so, yeah, as much as uh, uh, Taysok got the first knockout, at a position level, I'm not sure how favored they are. Uh, the uh, I was going to say, if they had uh, Suwa had brought the Roaring Moon, it'd be in a good position being able to threaten a knockout on the Cresselia while taking, uh, you know, very little damage from the Ogre Pond. But we see the Landris, uh, who can uh, threaten the very uh, infamous uh, U-turn, almost like it's a signature move now onto both these Pokemon, <laughs> as well as the Terra Blasts. So, uh, yeah, I think from a positioning perspective, uh, Shuai is definitely still in it. Yeah, I find it very funny, as you point out, um, especially in previous generations, before it got Stomping Tantrum, Landorus was known more for Rock Slide and U-Turn than for any of its actual yes. uh, stab attacks. Now it's got access to that Terror Blast, that Stomping Tantrum, you see it a lot more. But previously, it was a flinch bot, and it switched. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we yeah, will... So uh, we'll We'll see what oh, uh, they're going to go for this turn. But this Landorus, as you said, threatening either a U-turn or a big Terror Blast here, which it looks like we might see. Um, I think we did see the Terrestrialization come out from the Landorus. So this is now threatening a Terror Blast into potentially uh, either spot. It'll pick up a KO on two, unless we see a Terrestrialization from Taysiok's end, which we don't. We see the Follow Me come out. So Ogapon, unfortunately not long for this world, is not going to take this uh, Terror Blast very well <laughs> at all. Super effective damage from a Pokemon as powerful as Landorus. You are out of there. Uh, and now Amoongus gets a free attack into the Cresselia of its choosing. Cresselia goes for another Lunar Blessing. Um, so it's going to get a little bit of health back. But if the Amoongus has gone for a Spore here, uh, then yeah, Cresselia is going to sleep. And now all of that setup doesn't mean much because you can't attack next turn. Yeah, this is the real devastating combination of Landorus and Amoongus, what really shows uh, how, how good of a combination they are, because you can go for the super effective uh, Terror Blast into the Pokemon uh, that, you know, usually cannot get spored because of the grass typing, 
and then uh, yeah, you can spore uh, anything else. So you kind of saw that happen perfectly, where the Pokemon would follow me, had to either terrestrialize uh, to not get knocked out uh, or get knocked out and spore its partner. So um, with Tasok getting its Landris and being able to uh, mitigate damage uh, coming out from the Landris while also threatening uh, a knockout onto um, so was Amoogus, who no longer can terrestrialize. Uh, definitely still in it, but I think the Cresselia is a little bit dead weight now with uh, you know how histor- uh, usually not fast is trained. So even with a quick wake up, it might get knocked out before it has an opportunity to move again. Yeah, although the important thing that last turn there is that uh, CUI used his terrestrialization, so now can't use that on um, the Amoongus here to save it from a Terror Blast. But if this Landorus uh, on Tasteox end locks itself into Terror Blast here, then it does run the risk of not being a Heatran. And instead, we saw. Was that a Stomping Tantrum? I believe so. <laughs> so I guess really making an aggressive read. Yeah, trying to make a hard call out on the switch in on potentially a heat run there. That is not much damage for a terror blast from Landorus. I know it's intimidated, but Priscilla is very bulky. And we see the spawn now come into this Landorus. Both Pokemon on Paceox end now asleep. Yeah, we see the turn wrap up with Tasox, uh, Cresselia, healing a little bit of HP from uh, leftovers. Might put it out of range from Terra Blast and the Pollen Puff from, uh, you know, your observation of how little it did. But looks like Soa is going to go for it anyways. Um, and yeah, with the Landorus freshly spored, it's uh, not moving this turn. Yeah, so Landorus guaranteed to sleep. Cresselia could here wake up. Uh, and if it does, a Lunar Blessing would be very nice. Uh, a bit of health back on itself and also crucially waking up the Landorus. That's not a huge amount of damage from that Terror Blast, but the Cresselia does stay asleep. Uh, so this Demus is going to get the Pollen Puff. Is it enough to get up the knockout? It is, and Cresselia now goes down. That's a big blow for Tasioc. Not only losing the Cresselia, but losing the chance to go for maybe a Blessing on that Landorus, and also losing the opportunity to switch Landorus out for more Intimidates in future. Uh, and the Intimidate on uh, CY Landorus here looking very nice as we see two physical attackers on Tasioc's end. So, and uh, not only to reset Intimidate, but also to reset the move it's locked into because it is locked into that stomping tantrum we saw earlier. So this almost becomes a 2v1, where as long as that Iron Hands gets knocked out uh, before uh, Suwai's Landorus gets knocked out, uh, I think it's just like an automatic win for Suwai. So uh, I think that Iron Hands has a lot on its plate. Yeah, although it depends. If it ends up in a, in a 2v2 situation and you have to lock into Iron Hands, uh, sorry, you have to lock into Stomping Tantrum on Suwai's end again, we may end up in a weird end game where we get two Landorus's Stomping Tantruming each other for the entire game. Um, but I don't know how likely that is, uh, as the Iron Hands also now falls asleep. Worth noting with the Terrestrialization, that Wild Charge from the Iron Hands is now super effective on Landorus, as opposed to it being completely immune, as it was previously. But, not too much of a worry this turn, Iron Hands is guaranteed to be taking a nap. So, this, uh... The Landorus can come in pretty safely here on the Heat Transport, which is what we're going to see, getting that Intimidate down, uh, as Landorus comes in. And now, I think Tayshaw is going to have to get very lucky with a lot of early wake-ups, maybe critical hits here to pull this back, but it's it's possible. It's just not likely, as we see Landorus staying asleep again. Uh, he is a very, very tired dog, I think. <laughs> and Iron Hand's also asleep. Uh, Amoogus is going to go for... for, for it looks like a I spore another spore to account yeah. for the, the good luck that you talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, pretty interesting end game where, yeah, I think, yeah, Suwai just really wants to get rid of the Iron Hands, and uh, knowing that the opposing land is uh, locked into Staunting Tantrum, intimidated uh, at least once, maybe twice, uh, makes the, you know, a powder here very safe so that you can protect this Landorus from uh, getting a wild charge. And yeah, I think it's a pretty smooth sailing for uh, Sue from here. Yeah, you'd expect it's uh, relatively wrapped up. Like you said earlier, this Landorus is choice locked into that stomping tantrum. And so once this Iron Hands goes down, as long as Sue can switch his Landorus out, uh, it's game over, I think. And we see a protect from movies here, actually. Um, as we see the stomping tantrum come out from the Landorus, who does finally wake up um, and uh, opposing stomping tantrum into the Iron Hands here. And we're going to see Iron Hands staying asleep. So a little bit fortunate there from uh, CUI. If that Iron Hands had woken up and gone for a wild charge without the rage power of that Amoongus, that would have been a lot of damage into Landorus. I don't think it would have killed through the Intimidate. 
Uh, but potentially a crit there might have changed the game a lot. And we are just going to see a forfeit, unfortunately, from Tasiok. Uh, 